Well, hello, everybody. I am so excited today to bring you a special interview with one of my favorite people. My uncle, Bill Christ, has an amazing story to tell, and he is going to share his heart with you. He's got one of the biggest hearts ever. He's been a longtime teacher and counselor and loves kids. And I tell you what, the room just lights up when he walks in. So I'm so excited to be able to bring this interview to you today. So, hey, Bill, how are you? I'm doing great, as always, you know. Good. Um, Tell us your story. Well, I have a new story, you know. Yes. I, I came to the Juice Plus family about four years ago, and that was a story. And then this fall, I had in September, I felt in my abdomen on the right side, just above my groin, a lump, a, a, a tumor. So I go to the doctor, and CAT scans. It revealed I had non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, and this, and I actually had five tumors, only one of which I noticed, and it got to be pretty good size, about the size of a, a probably a cantaloupe. It got to be pretty good size, really, but I didn't feel bad. I never felt bad or anything, but anyway, took a while, and I was um, um, diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, and I know Michaela's grandmother had cancer a few years ago, and she was really to help, really able to help her nutritionally. I didn't know she'd helped many others since too, but um, so I got a hold of Michaela. Actually, I went to her website, stridingthroughcancer.com. That's T H R U cancer.com, and it's a wealth of information. It really is. Even though we're related, I still went through every video on that oh. website helped me a whole bunch but basically in a nutshell the the um the the thought is or the and it's and i don't even call it a thought anymore it's a fact that um, um cancer feeds on sugar and it will not exist in an alkaline environment so right away as soon as i had the cat scan and they told me there were five tumors i was pretty certain that i had cancer so right away, I started on the, the new way of eating. I don't even call it a diet anymore. It's my new way of eating. It's my new lifestyle. And I um, cut out all sugar, of course. And I didn't think I was a big sugar eater. But when I cut out bread, pasta, pizza, rice, I live in Southern California. They want to shove rice down you with everything. And so when I cut that out, and tortillas, flour tortillas are really high. Corn, I don't eat, I used to eat just a can of corn, thinking that was pretty healthy, but for for turning to sugar, it turns to sugar pretty quickly. So I cut out all that stuff. I also changed my diet by eating a lot more uh, greens, um, like kale, spinach, broccoli. I'm not a big broccoli fan, but I eat a few. But I put them in my smoothies. I, I use Complete, the, the Juice Plus Shake, and I put like, uh, like we bought some kale probably in October. We cut it up and kept the stems. And I put the stems in a bag and froze them. And now when I make a shake, I just put the stems in there. And I also right, yeah. drink, and, and it, it keeps my alkalinity. I've never hardly been below seven ever since. I, I do that. I drink this stuff called smart water. Um, Tony found this water that... Uh, is it goes into your body at 9.2 uh, pH. And she found it at 99 cent store. She buys it by the case. Well, that's all we use. We, she, we even make coffee with it and everything. Wow. And that's a lot to keep my alkalinity up. Uh, I can really tell if I don't drink it. I really do. So yeah. those things, but, but you can really make your own. Um, if you take a, uh, I think it's a quarter teaspoon of baking soda, and mix it with a cup of water, an uh, eight ounce glass of water and drink it, it brings your alkalinity up, it brings your pH up. So That's right. That's so the, the theory is that if, if you want a higher pH so that cancer can't grow, you can drink any water. However, yeah. you might as well start off with a water that's higher in pH so your body doesn't, you know, so it's easier on your system. Exactly. And your, and your body, just by the food we eat, the body wants to come back to acidity because most of our foods are more acid-based. But um, 
so I went on this diet and I've, I have, I have stayed on it and now it's a lifestyle. Um, it really not as difficult as I thought it might be. Um, it really, it really isn't. Um, I also tr try to do a more plant-based diet. I started that in August after I saw the movie Game Changers. If you haven't seen that, see that movie. So and uh, I grew up in Nebraska. That's the beef state. I'm not a full-on vegetarian, but I probably eat plant-based three or four days a week, something like that. That's good. Okay, there's a lot so of different you were, things you can do. Oh, I'm sorry. You were diagnosed in September. Right. You didn't start treatment until December. I started so treatment. Tell us what the interim time looked like. We know you changed your lifestyle. We know you changed your eating habits. But how, I know you had a PET scan right in the beginning and then again before your treatment started. So tell us what that looked like in the interim just with nutrition. Actually, I only had one PET scan and that was just a couple days before um, treatment. Now, even though the doctor says there's no scientific evidence that links sugar with cancer, the PET scan is they want you to go on a low carb diet two or three days before and then what they do is they radioactively charge sugar molecules and inject it into your body intravenously. And uh, the, they say the cancer, the sugar latches onto the cancer. Well, I know cancer is seeking sugar. So, right. but I had, my, I had my glucose rate down before my scan to 86. Anything under 100, is is great and so mine was down to 86 the tech said you're gonna have a great scan when I got to the scan when I when the doctor read the scan with me he says I don't understand it he said when we did your biopsy in in October the the biopsy showed that the big tumor was cancer hundred percent of the way through and it was seven inches in diameter he said now for whatever reason the the whole middle of that is just mush. All the cancer cells inside that big tumor had already died, according to the PET scan. But he said, I don't really know how to explain it. You so know how to explain it. I didn't, I didn't try. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, so you are two treatments in now. You're doing the right. RCHOP um, protocol for non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Right. So tell us a little bit about how that has gone, you know, side effects or things that surprised you or, you know, just tell us a little bit about that journey. You know, um, the side effects they tell you going in, nausea, sore mouth, um, um, sleepy all the time, tired all the time. I have not been affected by any of those particular side effects. They give you anti-nausea medicine. I have not taken one of the pills yet. And I have not even felt queasy. Not nauseous, not even queasy. I just, it just has, I just haven't had any side effects. About two weeks in to the, to the uh, first treatment, I got my first side effect and I lost all my hair. So I didn't want to look like a mangy dog, so I just shaved it off. But I, I'm 68 years old. I look pretty normal. <laughs> you know, to my age group, I really do. When when I went to the very first, um, this is an interesting part of the story. When I went to my very first treatment, a guy across from me, it was his first scan too, and they tell you to bring snacks because you're there for eight hours the first day. And so my snacks were real healthy. I had some broccoli and some chicken. I had uh, some apples. I had a little bit of cheese. I had some raw nuts. I didn't have, I drank a lot of water. I drank water after water after water. Um, that's a big key with this cancer chemo is drink a lot of water. I drink probably three liters a day. Wow. And that's a, that's a big factor. You know, for people who are watching this, water, water, water. Anyway, the guy across from me, he, uh, he is, his first snack was chips and salsa. You're not supposed to eat anything spicy. And, uh, a 32 ounce soda, Coca-Cola. Yeah. His second snack was some kind of fast food, I think a burrito, and um, another 32 ounce soda. By the time he got, by the time he left, 
his eye, his face was real swollen. He was real red. His eyes were sunk way back in his head. And uh, he says, I got to get home and get to bed. And um, I was a few minutes after him. And I'm saying to the nurses, why do you have to have anybody drive? I could drive. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, well, not everybody handles it quite like you. But anyway, That's good. it's the lifestyle change that makes that happen. Yes. Because another thing, of course, I'm, I'm a Juice Plus person. And you know if you take the trio, I happen to take the trio plus the uh, Omega blend, and I double up about a week or two before treatment because what that does is it detoxifies your body. And so when you go into treatment, they're going to put all this poison in your system that's going to put a lot of toxins in your system. But if your body is empty of toxins, your body can naturally get rid of the toxins like it should. Yeah. So expect if you're drinking a lot of water, you're pretty toxic free. The first few days after, after um, chemo, they want you to stay pretty much quarantined. And I think I know the reason because you don't get five steps away from the restroom. I'm not kidding you. I'm like right now I'm three days out. I'm, I got, I got my last treatment last Friday. And I'm just at the end of my detoxification, but uh, this video can't last too long because <laughs> I have to take a break. But that's a good thing. That's a good thing because I I really um, I really feel like all these things is is helping me to become to take this chemo on because chemo is no walk in the park. It's right. not like it's not like taking diabetic medicine or something like that. Right. Okay, last question, and you can make it as quick as you want, but two, two treatments in, obviously going well. I can't believe day three, you're, I mean, usually that's kind of the roughest time, right? Days one right. through five or so. Um, have you had any challenges, or were there anything that, you know, has anything happened that kind of surprised you? I know you're surprised that you haven't had many side effects other than the hair loss, but um, name any challenges that you've had. Our biggest challenge, and this is a rare challenge they tell me, is when you're getting rid of this chemical, your body emits it and, and you don't even notice it. It's not really a smell. My wife said it's more like an effect. She gets kind of a metallic taste in her mouth. She, if she's around me too close, she, her, her throat starts getting scratchy, her eyes start to water. And so that's really been all the way through chemo, at least the first time. The last Last few days, it wasn't so bad, maybe the last five days, but we've had to sleep in separate bedrooms. If we go for a drive in the car, we have to have the windows down. Um, it's really been more difficult on her than it has me, other than the fact that I never sleep very good without my wife beside me. So that's been right. our biggest challenge. That's really been our biggest challenge. And, and they say it's a very rare that it happens, but some people do are affected by it and so that's that's really been our only challenge to be real honest with you um i'm i'm tired i'm i'm, I'm extra tired um i go to i go to sleep easy and i sleep hard and two hours up i gotta get up and pee and then i'm out right back to sleep though you know yeah um, another thing that i've found is food just doesn't taste good mm -hmm. now the challenge they want you to eat five to seven small meals a day, which I do, but it's really hard to get some things down. I just, and I'm a foodie. I really am. I, I've challenged with my weight most of my life, and, and food is my fix. That's all there is to it. <laughs> I'm not a drinker. I'm not a woman chaser. I'm not a drugger. Food <laughs> is my fix. But, uh, but that's been my biggest challenge. The best sideline is – because of this low carb, low sugar diet, I've lost about 25 pounds. And I got on the scale day, I lost another pound because I'm not putting sugar, it's kind of a poison in itself. Yeah. I'm not putting those kind of things in my body. Yeah. And so my body is able to work more efficiently. And I think my, my metabolism, I'm not eating less, I'm eating plenty. Yeah. But 
you'll get to the point where a thing, or I have anywhere, where things don't taste quite as good. Yeah. Okay. So any closing thoughts? You can, you have the floor. Drink plenty of water. You okay. cannot drink. Um, if you want to put a little um, strawberry in it or something like that to make it taste good, if you're not a water drinker, um, drink lots of water. The more water you drink, the more this chemo interacts better with your body. And uh, my, my, uh, my meeting with my doctor just before my second scan, he said, well, as well as you, as you have handled the first chemo, the first treatment, expect all the treatments to be the same way. So oh, even yeah. though I've had people tell me that the second and third treatment are a little more difficult, I haven't found that yet. I haven't found that yet. But his prediction is you, all your treatments are going to go smooth. And they all say, the doctors and nurses say, some people just handle it better than others. Although one thing I have found is all the techs, all the nurses, even though the doctors say cancer and sugar is not related, they all want to know what I'm doing. And when I tell them I'm on the low sugar, low carb diet, they're all interested. And in fact, many of them have written down the website that Michaela's created called Striding Through Cancer. And many of them are curious. They really are. Wow. In fact, my first nurse said, um, we're getting closer and closer to realizing there's, there's a difference in that. But he said, we're not there yet. That was his statement. <laughs> he's an RN, not a, not a oncologist, but he's, he's working the front lines too. You know? Oh, well, you are such an inspiration. And one of my favorite things about you, Bill, is no matter what you do, you're glorifying God the whole way. So, oh, amen. And you know what? This is another thing I wanted to add. Um, my community is extensive. You know, I did, I've, I've been a counselor for 42 years. I'm now working part time. I have over a thousand Facebook friends. I put it on Facebook and I have got prayers from clear across the United States, clear across the globe. Yeah. You know, uh, people have just passed it on and passed it on. I have a good friend who happens to be a Catholic, lifelong Catholic. I'm not a Catholic, but he has good friends that are priests all over the nation. They all lit candles for me during Advent. Wow. I got, I have probably five or six priests that lit candles for me during Advent. Oh, it's, that's awesome. It's almost overwhelming. I just got a call from my pastor before this started saying, hey, Bill, we're still praying. We're still praying. And we're so let us know how we can help you. Yeah, and that's that's the pastor of my church, but that's not it. Everybody's praying. Everybody's praying. I I have the first time I put it on Facebook, I had 500 and some likes and over 300 comments. I know that kind of support. So turn it over to God. That's what I did. I turned it over to God. Yeah. Oh well, thank Just, you so much for your time, though. We appreciate it so much. Oh well, thank you, Michaela. I appreciate. A whole lot. Thanks for this opportunity. You bet.